Good morning friends. In this class, we will discuss the quark model in an historical way. So in last few classes, we discussed the Sakata model, the eightfold way and such efforts to make order in the world of elementary physics. We found that the eightfold way brought more order in elementary particle world and it could predict some missing particles in super multiplex like omega minus but it could not predict the existence of new super multiplex. Also, the eightfold way could not explain the particular mass of each particle, even though it could found relationships between various hadrons, like we wrote the equation, the Gelman Akiba equation, and like that, among the baryons, and like that. We found the relationship between various hadron, but we could not explain why those particular masses. In 1962, Neyman and Heim proposed that the baryons are made of more fundamental components but the response was less from the scientific society. In 1964 Gelman and George Zwick proposed the quark model. According to this model all hadrons are composed of three fundamental particles called the quarks and their three andy particles. Actually Gelman named them quarks. Each meson is a quark and the quark pair while each baryon is composed of three quarks and each andy baryon is composed of three andy quarks. So th this is the basically the quark model. Means each meson is quark and the quark pair. Each baryon is composed of three quarks and each andy baryon is composed of three andy quarks. This model could explain all the properties of hadrons then known and it could solve many mysteries uh, that were not explained. See, these are those proposed quarks U, B, S and then Andy quarks A bar, B bar and S bar where this u represents up, b represents down, and s represents trines, and then andy quarks. See their properties, u has an electric charge, 2 by 3rd of electronic charge, and d has minus 1 by 3, and s again minus 1 by 3, and the andy particle, this opposite charge of their quark, corresponding quarks means u bar minus 2 by 3, d bar 1 by 3, and s bar 1 by 3. And also the baryon number c, this baryon number is 1 by 3 for each quarks, and for anti quarks, again, negative of this, their baryon numbers. And also the isospin, you can see, initially this u and d was considered as a doublet, and this S as a singlet. That is why this isospin 1 by 2, 1 by 2, and the S as a isospin 0, as it is a singlet. And the antiparticles also, this, this antiparticle pair 
was considered as a doublet that is why this is again 1 by 2 not minus 1 by 2 see this difference not this difference and this s bar is again 0 as it was considers, considered as a singlet and look this strangeness value this u and t was non strange particle hence it has hence they have a, a strangeness values of 0 but the strange particle the s the s quark has a strangeness value of minus 1 and this also the antiparticles also u bar and d bar is again non strange particle but the s bar has a strangeness of plus 1 is the opposite of this s so these are the basic properties of uh, the quarks and about that all have a spin of byte byte that is h cross byte all have spin h cross byte now see some examples uh, the proton the proton is composed of this u u d this u u d we will see some uh, some quantum numbers and their values see what is the charge of this proton this u is plus 2 by 3 and this u is again plus 2 by 3 and this d is again this d has a charge of minus 1 by that is 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 4 by 3 minus 1 by 3 that is plus 1 so this has a charge of plus 1 and this all these has all these have the uh, barrier number 1 by 3 so the net barrier number is 1 by 3 and this up quark is uh, suppose they may have if, even though they have the spin of 1 by 2 they can be upward and downward so the up is the upward the spin of u is upward the spin of this u is downward this one is upward so that the uh, total spin will be this 1 by 2 plus minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 that is the spin will be 1 by 2 this spin is cancelled and this remains so that is the spin is 1 by 2 and for the neutron again you can see and their strangeness is again zero there is no strange particle all has the strangeness yes is as zero so the net strangeness is again zero and you can see this n for the neutron this is u d d means one u quark and two d quarks so that is uh, why their charge is zero maybe because this u has a charge of plus 2 by 3 and d minus 1 by 3 and this d is again minus 1 by 3 so the net charge is 0 and the spin of again this u is uh, plus half and this one has minus half and this one has plus half that is why the net spin is plus half that is the this neutron has a plus half or plus h close by to spin and their uh, strangeness is again 0 and the barrier number is again 1 since all the components all the quarks has a barrier number of 1 by 3 okay and similarly you can see this is the resonance particle of the proton one of the resonance particle of proton so that is why this is u u d you can see this is u u d see all the quarks are same but the spin is is the positive so the spin is here the all three quarks has uh, all these three quarks have a spin upward that is why the spin of this delta plus is uh, 3 by 2 h cross okay and this delta plus plus quark structure is u u u triple u and all have uh, all are 
upward spin all are with upward spin that is why this has a spin of 3 by 2 uh, or 3 by 2 edge cross and see some examples for this pions this pion is pi plus see the pi plus is made of u and d bar one quark and one and a quark and the charge is this u has a plus 2 by 3 and this d bar has again plus 1 by 3 so only plus 1 charge and their baryon number is this has plus 1 by 3 this has minus 1 by 3 so the baryon number is 0 and the strength is again 0 uh, and like and their uh, spin this one has a spin plus and this one has a spin minus 1 by 2 so the next spin is 0 again here is only 0 uh, the, for the Kepler this is convulsion of u s bar and uh, their charge is again this one has plus 2 by 3 and this again plus 1 by 3 so the net charge is plus 1 and the strangeness see the strangeness this one has a strangeness 0 and this one has a strangeness plus 1 so this has a strangeness of plus 1 okay and the value number is again 0 and this here is also you can see this is the uh, resonance particle the rho plus is the resonance particle of this pi plus here the quarks are same but the spin is just opposite this d bar has also an upward spin so the net spin becomes plus one plus half plus plus half it becomes plus one and the charge is again plus one the strangeness is zero and like that see this special one this is omega minus this omega minus is composed of really three is quarks and all have all are with upward spin that is why this has a spin of three by two h cross okay and this is the sigma plus which is u u yes uh, so the charge is again plus one since this has two by three two by plus two by three and minus one by three so the net is plus one the strangeness because of this yes quark is minus one and the barrier number is again one uh, and see this this one this omega minus we al already mentioned that this is uh, with the three s quarks all s are with the strangeness minus one hence the total strangeness of this omega minus is minus three okay so these are some examples for the quarks and we could explain all the all their properties, all their quantum numbers using this quark model. So soon after the quark model explained, the intense research were carried out to find the free quarks. But all efforts in different ways to de detect the free quarks were in vain. Hence, it was explained that the force between the quarks or in their quark pores becomes rapidly stronger, very, very stronger as distance between them increases. Distance between the quarks increases. In this way, this force differs from all other forces because Generally, all forces, all the, the strength of all kind of forces decreases when the interacting particles stay apart. But in this case, as the particle becomes more and more apart, the force becomes more and more intense. So it needs extremely high energy to release a free core. Just like a string, just like a spring, extremely high energy to release a free quark and it acts like a free particles when they are closer. Even providing such extremely high energy, it cannot produce free quarks because the energy materialized to produce new 
quark and the quark pair. Such high energy is needed to produce free quarks and when such high energy is uh, given, the, the new quark and the quark pair is produced. And this new quark replies the existing one of the existing quark in the hadron and release the quark and the released quark and the freed quark combine with the new anti-quark to produce a new meson. We will see an example. See this one, this process or this interaction, we are given very, very high energy, extremely high energy to the proton. And what happens, you can see the proton is composed of U, U, D quarks, and we are giving extremely high energy to this proton. Now what happens, this one of the quarks becomes free, this bond breaks and one of the quarks uh, becomes free. You can see this U quarks become free, but since uh, the extremely high energy is available here, the this high energy materialize and produce a quark and a quark pair here this d d bar pair is produced this quark and a quark pair is produced now what happens this uh and the quark produce combined with this release the quark and they becomes another particle what is ud bar ud bar is this pi plus and this produced the D, the produced the quark, uh, the produced D attached with the this uh, old section of this proton, and it becomes UDD. Now it is become it is UDD. What is UDD? UDD is neutron. So the net reaction is neutron plus pi plus means giving extremely high energy to the proton that produces the neutron and pi plus. So this happens when extremely high energy is given to a hadron and hence we cannot observe the free quarks. Soon it is uh, freed or soon it is released, it combined with uh, the new produced d bar and quark and becomes another material or another hadron. Okay.